Today at Manchester Theatres, I am with the wonderful Luca Chadwick Patel, and he is currently touring with My Beautiful Laundrette, a show that is supported by the National Theatre as part of the Theatre Nation Participation Initiative. I think I got that right. <laughs> it's very long. Um, but the play, of course, is based on the Oscar-nominated screenplay, and it is coming to the Lowry from the 19th of March, so we do not have long to wait. Now, Luca is playing the central role of Omar, but you might have seen him on stage in shows such as Mamma Mia, Millennials, Legally Blonde, or with the RSC in The Magician's Elephant. Luca is also a very established concert performer, having been in shows that highlight Sondheim's music, the BBC proms with Warhorse, Carousel the concert and so so much more. So we are thrilled that you are coming back home to the Larry to perform with us. Um, not long to wait. Thank you for joining us Luca. Well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So, um, my beautiful laundrette, um, we know that there's the film, but if you could kind of tell us a little bit about the show and, and the, um, the story behind it. Fab. So, yeah, my beautiful laundrette is set in 1985. To kind of set the scene, is the rule of Thatcher, lots of depression, hard times, recession. It's, it's a difficult time for everyone. And basically, I play the character called Omar, and... The story kind of follows his journey. So it starts off where he's kind of down and out. Uh, to not give too much away, he's kind of looking for an opportunity and is searching for something more in his life. And his dad basically says, do you know what? I've had enough of this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you a job. We're going to get you out of the house before you go to college and you're going to do something with yourself. So he rings his uncle, NASA, and says, can you get Omar a job? So NASA gets Omar a job. And basically he kind of finds himself in this in this new world and Papa and NASA's views, the brothers are very different. So Papa's education, education, whereas NASA is money, money and look what the hard work and enterprise can get you. Um, so Omos kind of buys into NASA's view and basically to set the scene, he gets given a laundrette. Now NASA owns this laundrette, which is in the South of London that is kind of down and out is, Basically, he describes it as a toilet. <laughs> and basically, Omar starts to do up the laundrette and finds his purpose by working on this laundrette. And in the process of that, he kind of reconnects with an old, I don't know if I'd, I'd say the word friend, but someone he knew from school called Johnny. Yeah. Um, who, they, I think they were friends when they were younger, but Johnny kind of went down a very different path to Omar. Um, and they kind of re reconcile and they start this beautiful thing between the blossoms. And I don't want to give too much away, but yeah, that's, it's kind of about their journey and Omar's journey from finding himself through that play. Yeah. So Omar is, um, like you say, he is given this laundrette by his uncle and he kind of has this choice to make between going down this enterprise it's like um early days of the apprentice really isn't it like going yeah, down this, yeah yeah going down that route or getting all the education behind it first and mm. when you're when you're looking at your character and you you're having to kind of buy into what he does mm. because he's got so much coming going on i'm going to come to some of it not in too much detail so i don't want to give too much away but yeah, yeah. how do you approach like a character like omar well actually I've never really played a character like Omar, so it's been great fun because he has such a journey. Yeah. It's, it's so rare you find a character that has is so well written and that has such an arc in what he does. So really, I, I the, the writing does it does the work itself. It's yeah. Hanif's work is just fantastic. And so just approaching it and really going on that journey and I guess playing the stakes, that's something we've really focused on in rehearsals and like getting down to the text and really like looking at this story and really just focusing on what it is because there's so much information in the play. Um, so it's, for me, it's really just adhering to that journey, like really starting him off at that point where he's yearning for something new and then that real choice, like everything he's been taught and everything he believes and then just being presented with this whole new viewpoint that 
you can just see and it happens like that within the space of a day he, he has a suit and he has money and it's like these are things that can happen for me but it's at odds with everything he's ever known so yeah and then by the end omar makes some decisions that i really disagree with with personally but it's, it's, the, it's that thing isn't it he, he changes so much and he's affected by everyone in the play yeah there's, there's so many characters and he kind of meets everyone and he goes on that journey and he takes on small things from each of them which really shape him to where he ends up which is nowhere near where he started which again is, is the fun bit there's yeah. so much to play with which is why i love it yeah and what is just brilliant is you have playing your father in the show, Gordon Warneck, who was Omar in the film. I mean, that is amazing. Have you been picking his brain for like ideas and the way that he did it? Do you know what? I actually haven't because Gordon, Gordon is the most humble and, do you know, what? If, if, he, if he had never been in the film, you'd never have known it because he, really? he's the most humble and he's just, he's there to work and he's just there to really focus on what this is. Like he obviously, he, we have talks about how, how things were and like, but I've, he, he's never once imposed himself or said like, this is how you should do it. Like he's so open to everything and that's why he's so brilliant. So I have picked his brain about a few things, but he's, he's just one, he's there to play. And also it, it's changed so much. His version of Papa is so different to the film and my version of Omar is different to the last version of the play. And then the film itself, I think the, the work lives and breathes on its own in, in, a, in a new way, which is the exciting part whilst also still adhering to some of his choices, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this, and I think the reason that you can, like, watch this play, if you had, like, a different cast, different creatives, mm. even though the story is the same, there's so much going on in it that, you you know, you could get different interpretations. I mean, you've got nationalism, racism, sexuality, mm. um, drugs, class, financial political crisis i mean it's all going on isn't it it's it's kind yeah. of a lot to to kind of work through in a text isn't it that it's a lot to take in and i, I yeah. think it's, it's, that's why we've spent a lot of time really trying to simplify all of the things around it to really just focus on the text because there's so I say, there's so much information there's so much to hear and again there's a lot of plot a lot of things happen in the space of like two hours and 15 minutes <laughs> so you really have to like focus in and, and get really into it so yeah i think it's just it's just one of those things like the themes are so important and it's really just about delving into them and not being not being half with them like really going in and like Hanif's work is so unapologetic and all the characters are so honest and real they're not nice characters most of the time they all have their flaws but that's why they are so brilliant they're real people then it's not like the the perfumed version of what it is it's, it's real yeah. real people that you would have met yeah yeah and does does that sort of help you when because there's so much like we've said with the themes and the text and all of these different things um as a performer you're going on stage and that can carry a weight with it because there's people mm. in the audience watching who might be like oh yeah that's such but are they recognize it or they're living it themselves mm. um and I know that's your job and I know that's what you're trained for. Mm. But then yeah. at the same time, is the dependent on how pot potentially you feel that day, I suppose that could be really empowering that you've got that platform to go, look, you know, this is, but then if you've had a bit of a rubbish day or you're tired, then it, it could be really draining as well. So mm. how do you kind of play with that? Well, I'll say we're, we're into our third week now, so I've not had one of those shows yet, but I'm sure I will have one as everyone does in a job. It's one yeah. of those things, like naturally you can't always work into work and go, I'm completely yeah. ready for this. It's, 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 it's a job in the end, as much as we love it, it's, that's, that's the beauty of it. Um, it's, it's something that's really important to me and, and like looking into Omar and like learning about his, his character and stuff, I, I found so many of his experiences, even now to be similar to mine. Mm. So that's something that I hold and I carry with it. And again, like there's people, we spent a week at the start of rehearsals kind of like talking through the script and some of the older members of the cast, not too old, but <laughs> kind of talking about their experiences of the eighties and like things like hearing about first time experiences of people at the time. And it does impress on you that again, th these are real people and the people that come and watch the amount of people that have already come and said, like I was Omar or I was, I was this person. And I really relate to that character. And that was the beauty of the film at the time, because it never really been done before. Yeah. There'd never been an interracial gay relationship on screen. And it's ne it's never referenced. That's the beauty of it. It's never once said, 
and it's it just is love and love is love and that's all that love, that's all that it is yeah so we we hold it really closely and it's something that we all really care about and we're very committed to telling the story because not only for Hanif but just for every single person person that watches because everyone will relate in some way whether it's class race sexuality as you say anything is so universal which is why it's so important i think and i think the beauty of hanif's writing as well is that yeah he's got all of these heavy themes that are real life and they do affect real people but amidst all of that chaos mm. it is real life and he just finds that quirkiness and those moments with the mm. writing for humor there's so much humor in in all of this like crazy yeah. world um it, it's i mean for an actor that you've just got everything going on haven't you it must be brilliant it's a gem of a play it really is like because as you say it's you can go from like the saddest most like heart-wrenching moment to the just complete silliness and like just the, the most light it's that's the beauty of the thing like he's he's just brilliant and it's it is a joy for all of us to have the chance to to give it life and breathe air into it again it really yeah. is. Yeah. And and one of the things that, I mean, it makes you think a lot, I think, this play, as an audience mm. member, um, or if you even if you're just watching the film, it makes you think a lot about different things. And for me, one of the, what I've taken away from it is that on, like, you've, you've sort of touched on it, on paper, you kind of look at, um, at Omar and Johnny and you think, are they are they good are they nice people because they do this and they do this or they've done this and they do that but then you kind of look at it and go yeah but you're not in their circumstances they're trapped in these different circumstances to the ones that i'm in um and you like them these are characters that you like um and and i think it's a really good way to kind of go do you know what judgment actually doesn't exist because you're only ever judging from where you're at not from someone else's place yeah completely that makes sense <laughs> yeah because no because you can you can never understand what has led someone to make the decisions yeah. and we spoke so much about that with like the characters of genghis moose and johnny at the start of the play where they're just horrible young men who are just shouting at the world because they, they don't know anything else to do they have no opportunity they have nothing so they're they're brought onto this worldview because that's what they think is right. And you, I just, again, you just think these are just lost, lost boys with, with nothing. Yeah. So what has led them to that point? Because if you have a meeting, if I met one of them on the street and I had a terrible experience, I think what a horrible person. But again, you take a step back and you go, what has led them to that point? You look at Johnny and his, his life and you think he, he's just, he's been on this thing and he wants to make better of himself. And throughout the whole play, he goes on this wonderful journey. And he probably ends in the most positive position out of any of the characters, considering where he starts. And again, with Omar, he's, he's never fit in anywhere. He's, he's felt like he, he doesn't fit in with his brown heritage. He doesn't fit in with his white heritage. He's just in this middle gap and he doesn't know where he fits. So he, he just buys into this world and you, you, you kind of can't knock him for it. Like you, you can, but as you say, like it's, it's, his own, it's, it's his way of seeing a better future for himself. Yeah. And again, you could, you could never question those things if you're not in their shoes. If you're not in it, yeah. Completely, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, and talking about being in people's shoes, you've also got, um, we mentioned Gordon, but you've also got people from the original 2019 tour, haven't you? Yes. Um, who, are, who are back. So have they noticed a difference, like when you've been having conversations as to how it was then and like as life yeah. changes, that how it how it is being performed now? Well, it's 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 it's, a, it's based on the 2019 production, and there's a lot that's been kept. The script is still mainly the same, but we've we for example we lost the cast member, so we have now eight instead of nine. So there's been reworks around the script to to kind of affect those things. So and also the set's different, the costumes are pretty similar, but so it's, it's, it feels like a whole new thing. And they, as soon as we got into rehearsals, they said this is this isn't just us doing it again. This is a whole new experience for us, which obviously is amazing because then it's just a whole new fresh piece. Yeah. And everyone that's come who's seen it before have said that it feel, it's a different thing now. The last version was brilliant, and this is a completely new version that's going to take it forward. But even like post BLM, post COVID, like there's there's so much of this stuff that really is even more relevant yes. now, and it really just holds such weight. I mean, again, we become so desensitized the language and the themes of the play because we spend so much time in it, and you forget. That when people come in, they're hearing it for the first time. Like, what an effect it has! Yeah, 
because you, again we, we hear these words and, and these slurs every day so it kind of it loses the shine which again sounds crazy but when you're in yeah. it and you, it becomes part of the language of the piece that's just how we do it yeah so you forget what it's still when people come in you think ah oh, this is the first time they're hearing these words and in this context it really does hit hard especially after everything that we've been through recently in our times really definitely definitely and mm-hmm. and back in all of that and and again this is why it's just such a it just catches you all the time this play because you've got mm-hmm. all of that and the language that is shocking but then you've got all this incredible 80s music and then you've got mm-hmm. original music from the pet shop boys and yeah. tell me about the music well the music is just is 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 it's mood music and it really it paints the time we have like a pre-show before the show starts and it's like all of like the 80s songs and it's like we'll be sat in our dressing room kind of like, mm, like getting ready it's that, it's that thing because it it really captures a moment and it puts you in that world in that space and obviously the petrol boys music is just wonderful and all the original stuff they've written is fantastic and it is so tied to the world yeah. and yeah it just it, it creates this space that you kind of live in for two hours and it feels like it's own real world and i think when it's in the lowering when it's up north which i can't wait for it's going to really t- i feel like you're looking at a postage stamp of what was that's what i hope because it's it, it really does take you back to a time and, and a, a real place and a feeling i think which is so important for the play yeah music has that ability doesn't it it can mm. literally take you from wherever you are and put you somewhere else like re- it recalls yeah, yeah, it's amazing. So why, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious why, having listened to your talk, Luca, but have you got any lasting um, message as to why people should come and watch this show? I think people could should come and watch this show because it is universal. There's something for everyone. You'll learn something and you will hopefully feel uplifted when you leave the theatre. And I think it's a beautiful, hard-hitting, truthful just beautiful story that deserves to be heard and i truly believe that as an actor in it and as someone that has admired it for a long time yeah thank you so so much um i for one cannot wait to come and watch it i will be there um it is going to be at the lowry from the 19th of march my beautiful laundrette um with luca chadwick patel um so please come along and watch you have no reason not to it's going to be amazing (laughs) thank you so much and all the best luca thank you johnny johnny is that you It's me.